Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. I am Jen, Jer Mom, joined as always by Jer Dad. Hi. How's it going, Jer Dad? It's good. Nice to be with you in person again. Yeah, it was a long time between you being away and then me, us crossing again, Cross- this time in midair. Over Georgia. Yeah. I think I saw your plane. Oh. Uh, all right. Was I sleeping? Because that, then that was me. <laughs> you weren't that close. I was totally sleeping. <laughs> I believe it. Uh, thanks, everyone, for accepting our short podcast offering last week. To make up for it, I believe this week's podcast will last roughly four hours. <laughs> With all the stuff that we have on the list. Well, it's actually self-fulfilling. You can make it last four hours anytime. I'm happy to ramble with you. What's that called? Rambling? No, there's a some kind of like so-and-so's effect where a meeting fills the time scheduled for it. Uh, a look. motto? Okay, I looked it up. It's called Parkinson's Law. Work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. So if I give you a week to do a project, it'll take you a week. And if I give you a day, it'll take you a day. And if I give you two months, it'll take you two months. And if we have a half hour meeting, the meeting will be done in half an hour. And if it's a two hour meeting, nobody's leaving in half an hour. It is weird how meetings always wrap up at the time. Yeah, that's called the Parkinson, Parkinson's law. I think it's because the first person leaves at that time. And then everyone's like, oh yeah, we can also now leave. (laughs) Anyway, the cocktail of the week, I've been slacking on the cocktails of the week. And this week I invented a new cocktail for the cocktail of the week. I will not listen to you malign Jen and say that she's been slacking. No, you have not been slacking. I do this to Jared Ad all the time when he says like, oh, I'm such an idiot. I'm like, don't talk about my boyfriend that way. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so this week's cocktail invented by Jer Mom, mixologist, is called the Tropical Big Cheese. So good. Because it's yellow and... From the keys. Yeah. So it's three quarters of an ounce each, basically half a shot of key lime rum and coconut rum from the first legal distillery in Key West. You coconut gotta, rum that turns pink. Yeah. And the key lime rum that like has key lime juice in it. And you got to shake it up because like it settles to the bottom. It's delish. You got to come down here and get some. I got to say, we've had some liquor from small distilleries where they were experimenting and it some of the batches just didn't work right some of it just tasted crappy yes everything that we've tried from this key west distillery has been great they they are also experimenting but they're they're smart and they make good stuff it's all all good like the lime rum key lime rum you know it's not immediately awesome you can't sip it it's not for sipping but it mixes so well with stuff oh yeah it's really good uh so anyway we had bought some of that and uh they tell you like get some watermelon and just pour it over the watermelon and that's actually a great idea we'd never made a cocktail with it so it's half a shot each of key lime and coconut rum um four ounces of pineapple juice and then ginger ale to top it off you just put you don't need to shake this just pour it all into a glass of ice i'd probably a little bit less ginger ale and pineapple juice. Add as much as you like. I made one. Your dad's drinking it right now. It's pretty good. It's real good. I, I made, mean, ginger ale makes a real good addition to many drinks. I like my drinks to have some fizz in them, so it's always good for me to add ginger, ginger ale or soda. Isn't a mule anything with ginger ale? Yeah. So Moscow Kentucky, mule is Moscow mule, vodka. Kentucky mule, bourbon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the background, you may hear guacamole. He's got his ball. Topic he's, one. He's got his Kong. He's dropped his Kong on the floor. T- and, ten inches from his face. Oh, it's not ten inches. Don't be... He's mad at it. He's growling at it because it's not in his mouth. Now he's barking at it. I think he wants someone to, like, throw it or give it to him or take it away from There's him. There's nobody else near it. It's just on the floor. I think it's three inches from his face right now. Just, it, just put it in your mouth. Something wrong with that dog. This happens a lot. He plays this quote-unquote game a lot. And he's a big dog, and his growl sounds fierce. Oh, my God. All right, so let's let's get into the the news. The good, the bad, the ugly. There's, There's so much. All right, so we officially adopted guacamole. I blame myself as being in a fragile emotional state for making that decision. He's a good boy. He, he will eventually be a very good boy. Yep. 
He's not the greatest fit into the ethos of the household, which is like laid back. <sighs> Everybody's just cool, chill. He is euphemistically high energy. You can be high energy, but also chill. Mm, he's not chill. He's not. He's not. Nope. Uh, man. He just needs some training, right? He really hasn't had any training. Once he has like some rules and knows what to do, he'll be fine. And he has good pot times too. I mean, he's not always terrible and he's not a jerk. He's no. real weird. And he's not like Toby, right? Yeah. To I mean, not that Toby was a jerk, but he right. just, he was totally out of control. He was also, you know, nine months old or something. So he's not like that. Like guacamole will sometimes like come up and he'll like lay his head on your chest and cuddle in there. He's got this whole part that's very mellow. Yeah. But then he also gets so wound up. So someone had asked today, like, oh, is he a field golden, which he is. Like field and stream? Uh, yes, actually. <coughs> so someone had said, what's a field golden? And a very nice one of our followers responded with a very accurate and succinct response. It basically said field goldens are like a variety of golden retrievers that are specifically bred for hunting, and they tend to have a shorter coat Oh. And um, a really strong hunting drive. They totally look like hunting dogs. And they're a little sleeker. They tend to be slimmer. They don't yeah, have the yeah. big square heads. Um, they look like those hunting dogs. I don't know what they're called. Some yeah, kind like of pointers. Pointers, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, so they're slimmer, and he's like a really slim guy. Um, their heads are like a little bit longer as opposed to like a big block head. Shorter fur, which is what he has. He's he's a and they come in a variety of he colors. He doesn't have curls. Right, yeah. He's you know, he's got some feathers, but a lot of people are like, he's gotta be a mix of something. And he's not. There's a ton of goldens. We've had a ton of goldens that look like him. Um but he def you can tell that he is from a line of dogs bred for hunting. He has a very strong prey drive. He wants to chase stuff, but he always kinda wants like if you were taking him hunting, like duck hunting every day, he'd be really happy. He yeah, he'd be to like be romping around chasing he'd be like, stuff. Throw the duck again. Throw no, throw the duck again. Yeah. No, throw it. He he wouldn't do a good job retrieving because he'd be like, no, throw it, <laughs> and throw. It. So, uh, and there, there's nothing wrong with having that kind of dog. None of our other dogs have been like that. We've so always adopted them out. This kind of golden retriever we call mutos. Yes, yes. We can. I mean, all the mutos for us also happen to have been like mahogany furred like he is. Yeah. Um, but my parents have a field golden who's actually almost white, like much closer to Brody's color, though doesn't look like Chief Brody at all. He's also pretty lanky, yeah. Yeah, and he's got that short fur, kind of the slightly longer face. Fights Godzilla. And he's, I mean, he's the same way. Like they, they, they cannot have tennis balls in their house. He's nuts for tennis balls. Yeah, they have to keep the tennis balls in the garage. If he gets one in the house... He's just like will not stop with it, and it's the same. That's right. Uh, guacamole has the same kind of brain tick. If if you, I think guacamole would be like this, but certainly your parents' dog. If you emptied a a bucket of tennis balls in front of him, he his head would explode. <laughs> yeah. His brain would just go. <laughs> 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 he could uh, not handle. My parents' dog is a great dog. Like if mm -hmm. there's a ball in the house, he's crazy. But he's he's a good boy. Yeah, very well behaved. Like he's. You know, Guac just needs a lot of training. So um, the most annoying traits that he has, so he plays too rough, which is a common thing among a lot of dogs. He just gets really wound up and plays too rough. Um, which means he kind of barks and growls too loudly, and he's, he nips more than, well, he nips. Yeah, kind of like which, punches which his face do. against the other dogs. He's not trying to bite. He's not fighting, just, but it's too much. He just, um, didn't, he just didn't learn to modulate as a Puppy, I That's think. right. I think he wasn't socialized with it. Like he had one dog that he lived with, but he generally wasn't socialized. Oh. Um, he will not come and he thinks it's a great game to run away, which that I think is, we talked that about. That is the worst thing. He's, he's not little like a puppy and he can run really fast. He's very fast. A puppy's at least, you know, hop, little Hopper did this, he reminded me. And, but she would like waddle around a little bit. I mean, she was not the fastest. Oh no, she she needed. She inspired some real rage in me. Oh she my was old goodness, enough. she was. But like Guac, we were trying to get him. I think we were going to go out to dinner, and we were trying to get him, and and I couldn't get him. And Gr Dad went out to try because you approach him, and then he's like, yes, and he sprints away. And so Gr Dad kind of had him down by the water, and so I came, I flanked him, and then he's like. I'm just going to swim away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to swim across the which, ocean. Which admittedly was something we could not deal with. We were like dressed. <laughs> so like now, I, and I mean, I was literally crying. I was so frustrated. I mean, I'm, 
very emotionally fragile anyway, <laughs> but I was so frustrated with him. Uh, and I've, I had that moment with Hops too. And so I have a training lead for him. So we almost gave away Hops. I, that's not true. Hops. There were instances don't, don't where do I was joking about, you know, oh, honey. Salvation's Army is always looking for donations. Hops, I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah, when you're teaching a dog recall, you get a training lead, which is just like a really long leash, like a 30 foot leash. And you start with them short on it and you tell right. them to come. And if they don't come, you give them a little tug to pull them over. And then the idea is that you can stand 20 feet away from them and the leash is just laying, you know, you're holding it in, but it's laying on the ground. And then you can also give them a little pull when they need it. Uh, so we have one of those and we just have to have it. Like if we're letting them out and it's not like, okay, romp around in the yard for an hour, it's like, do your business and then we're gonna leave. He's gonna be on that leash. And he's he responds great when he's on that leash. Like he doesn't try to pull away. <sighs> hang, hang on. It's literally touching your face. God, it's so, he does this thing. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. You like to have a calm house and he's not calm. Yeah, that's the thing, right? All of our dogs have really been chosen to make our house joyful and relaxed and like a, a place that it just feels good to be in. And he's not bringing that energy right now. No, I, I mean, d during good times, he's fine and fits in and he's calm and he snuggles up. But when he has his manic 15 minutes, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of manic 15 minutes throughout the day. So anyway, he's ours whether we like it or not. And I'm being a little harsh because he's being obnoxious right now. But we are sending him to a week of stay and train with the same guy who worked with Toby, if you were following then. Um, he did, and we, we talked about him on the last podcast. He did miracles with Toby and Guac is so much better than Toby was. Like he, you know, he's older, he's calmer. Uh, and so, and I, Michael is the guy who, who does the training. And I was like, okay, so like he plays too rough. His recall sucks. Like he's got the super high prey drive and Michael's like, great, let's do it. Like no problem. This is the guy who taught Toby to like run alongside, trot alongside a bicycle. Yeah. Right? And like not run after anybody. So, um, that's going to be the beginning of April. He's going for that. And I think that's going to be really good. He'll be. He'll be a much better dog when he comes out of it. Because Just having recall is so important, right? Being able to, because, you know, if, if the dog like runs to the fence and barks at the UPS guy or is chasing the, you know, the seagull out in the water, you got to be able to reliably get a dog back. And once they know it, it's very easy to work it with them, right? To just be like, for 10 minutes a day, we're going to go outside and practice recall. Right. And then it's like a fun game for them to teach it you know, we're work we're still working on it, but it's a lot of work. We talked about this with Hops because you're f super frustrated because they're not coming, but you cannot show any of the frustration when they finally come. Yeah. You've got like the anger curve, you know, intersects the the <laughs> the, the facial niceness curve because you got to be super nice to the dog when they come because you got to make it the most pleasant experience ever, but you, all like, you want to do is like yell at them. It's like this girl at the bar last night. So we went we were out for dinner oh, yeah. and it's spring break and so even though people aren't traveling as much key west is very crowded there's she, a lot she of people said there. the whole month is spring break i think she said the whole fucking month is spring break <laughs> <laughs> uh and so you know the restaurant that we've been able to go to and just kind of sit down uh there was an hour wait when we showed up which is fine so we, we sat at the bar and uh and twice there's so like some woman had underpaid her they, yeah, she and, added a drink and it wasn't on the bill. No, it was on the bill. The oh. lady just paid for it before the bill came. And and the waitress or the bartender, she's was, she was so nice. She's like, so, you know, you ordered that other drink and I put it on here and, she, you know, the total's 48 and you only gave me 45. And she's like, yeah, well, I was paying for the first one. I just figured you'd give me the sec the last drink on another bill. And she's like, okay, no problem. And then some guy came up and he ordered an old fashioned. Which means he, I think that would mean she got a $3 tip on a $45 bill but anyway she was shorted three dollars well, on a 45 dollars like who knows yeah no, it wasn't much uh but yeah and so then a guy came up and ordered an old-fashioned and she said do you have a whiskey preference and he said actually you make that with bourbon he and actually she, said actually and I, I mean i could see her react i could see her and she went so what kind of bourbon would you like and i was like oh you have such good self-control like i <laughs> see how angry you are at this dude saying that to you and you're just 
you're just fine. <laughs> she did a very, she was very self-controlled. And that's what you have to do with a dog where you're just like, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. <laughs> so good to see you. It's Thank so you nice that you came back. Yeah, so yay. anyway, that is the guac story. So he's, he's here for the long term, but um, we're outsourcing some of the work. All right. So yeah, that's guac. Um, he's not the only new dog. We have now Chief Brody. Who's a very nice man. He's got a giant head. <laughs> he does. He's like the exact physical opposite of Guac. He's he's not. He's in the mold of Queso. Yeah. Big, he's a big boy. Curly. Yeah. White, which is different. He's, he's very white. He's our first white dog. Uh, he's an English cream golden. So Guac is a field golden. He, he's an English cream, which are white, curly. Generally have like a big square head. Uh, they're very pretty dogs and uh, there's just not they're more kind of like designer goldens over here like they're much more expensive they're very fancy Um, so he's nine years old and uh, he came in to rescue because he has extremely serious allergies he's got a terrible backstory yeah he's allergic to just like everything (laughs) like I mean not quite everything but close to everything I mean we did you tweeted that the sheet where they'd like check for allergens hang on he left Hopper outside. Uh, <laughs> How could she even get outside? I mean, the door was open. That's me. Oh. This is dogs. This is Swizzle. All right, count the dogs. I got five. Okay. <laughs> Swizz. Uh, sorry, Swizz, you locked you outside. So, in our defense, you were probably. So, oh, uh, yeah. So Chief Brody uh, got adopted, uh, or he got whatever purchased as a puppy. Yeah. And he had really serious allergies, so he's allergic to turkey and duck and... Grain. Some grains, beef, grasses, mosquitoes... Mold. Trees, mold. I mean, the, they did a test, and it's just like half red boxes. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so when you have a dog like that with those kinds of allergies, like they need a super controlled diet. Uh, they need a lot of baths. They need their ears cleaned all the time. Like otherwise, they're miserable and itchy, and they just feel terrible. And his previous people just wouldn't do it. They actually had him allergy tested like five or six years ago, and got basically the same results that we got, which is he needs to go on like this very restrictive diet. He's not allergic to everything. He can't eat anything that's not on this diet. Oh, <sighs> Um you know, and you have to give him these baths to, like, keep his skin healthy. And you have to do this ear washing to keep his ears clean. And they just didn't do it. So he'd get these, like, terrible skin infections. He'd smell bad because he was just, like, scratching all the time. So his skin is raw and oozy. And then, like, of course, that doesn't smell good. And they wouldn't give him baths for it. He had fungal infections on his skin. Reading his records, it looks like, you know, so he would chew on himself because he's itchy. So they put him in a cone. For what seems like pretty much five years. It's unbelievable to me that you would leave. It, it is like painful for me to have a dog in a cone for a day. I can't imagine. I mean, I, I, I can see that they were frustrated because he's itching all the time. But it doesn't make him not itchy to have the cone in. It just makes him unable to scratch himself. Oh, and so uh, mean. I mean, I was reading like the vet's notes and you can tell like the vet's notes in his old records like they're trying to be very neutral and they're really angry because they're like we keep telling him what to do like we keep giving them the treatment and it's not like it's that expensive you just have to not let him eat anything other than this and you you know like we have him on a prescription diet now because we're trying to get him all like back and stable but he can have chicken he can have sweet potatoes he can have rice like there's carrots carrots there's a decent amount of stuff that he can eat and there's plenty of like perfectly affordable commercial dog food that has the stuff that he can eat and he just can't have anything else you just have to pay attention and apparently like they had a whole bunch of kids the kids would feed him table scraps he's lost 20 pounds since he's been in rescue so he weighs 85 now so he has lost 20 pounds already and he's still five and he's and he's thick now yeah he's he's a little chubby now like he could lose another 10 for sure and not be svelte uh so yeah he was just kind of like this fat itchy dog they fed him all this stuff that he was allergic to 
they put this cone on him. When he came in, he had an infection from ticks. He had a fungal skin infection, a bacterial skin infection, like chronic ear infections that they had to do like this big treatment for. Just like, I mean, I think he was in the hospital at the vet for like a week just trying to take care of like all the stuff that was wrong with him, which is just because this the people who had him before wouldn't take care of him. It's terrible. It's amazing. He's nine. So after nine years, they're like, we just can't deal with this anymore. Because he smells so bad. No one would go up. The family would not like pet him or go up to him because he smelled so bad. Because he was infected because they wouldn't take care of him. It's just so, it's so heartbreaking. It's terrible. Anyway, he's a sweet boy for all that. He's amazing. So, uh, So he actually was listed on the website of our rescue group as up for adoption. And I was like, I want this dog. <laughs> like, I can totally take care of this. And they're like, you're fostering guacamole. And I was like, I want this dog. And they're like, well, you can't adopt a dog from the list at the same time you're fostering, but you could foster too. So why don't we just transfer him to you to foster him? And the person who was fostering him was like, what the heck, guys? And I'm like, I want this dog. <laughs> like, I'm going to adopt this dog. And so I had like this very long conversation with her, totally won her over. Um, and he's just the sweetest He's a big, sweet lap dog. Kind face of. licker, absolutely like physically. The face lap. licking is nice. It's real welcome. A yeah. little obsessive with the face licks. Uh, <laughs> just licks and licks and licks the face. He makes some schmeeg sounds, little happy noises. He grumbles around, yeah. Yeah, he's a great dog. He fits very well in the, like he's still a little, you know, he's only been here in the Keys for like a day and a half. So he's yeah. still settling in, um, but he fits really well in the ethos of the squad. So we just got to get Quack caught up to him. But that's that news. And dear dad, how did we get Chief Brody from Maryland, where I picked him up, to the Keys, where he is now? It's complicated. <laughs> so let me give the complicated logistics. Uh. Uh, it's basically the same as when we got Quack. I picked him up in Maryland because I was up there doing my job. Uh, and then on Saturday, I flew down to the Keys and dear dad flew out of the Keys to Maryland. And then dear dad drove him home. In an RV. In our RV. We finally bought the RV. No, I am not an RV person. No, I'm not going to go camping. You are now. No, I'm not going to drive to a bunch you of You are now. Parks. You know what? One can own an RV and not be an RV person, and oh, that's me. Oh, dude, you're like in Sam's world oh RV God, network. I hate it. I hate it so Discount much. Discount coupon having. Big and ugly and stupid. But it's going to make our trips much it's easier. It's better on the inside. It's hideous on the inside. I spent three hours today yeah, taping it Yeah, but it's better it on the inside. Oh I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with any of that, but uh, it's worse on the outside. Oh, my God. So, Jared Dad got home at like 4 a.m. So, obviously, we all just, you know, I woke up. We said I went to bed. Uh, the next morning, I think the first thing I did when I went out and looked at it was start peeling like the decals off the outside. I'm <laughs> like, were, this is like, ugly. It's coming off. Peeling beer labels off the bottles. <laughs> you were like peeling stuff off. The, I'm going to get them all off eventually. God, probably everyone's like, oh, those are good decals. They're like uh, lightning bolts and elite plus super yeah, elite That's what I pulled up like the and, elite plus thing. Uh, like, nope, it's coming off. Uh but yeah, the inside, uh, I mean, we posted on the snaps. It's all brown. It's totally like a boomer's design of it's the got inside. It's oak. It's oak. No, no, it's Brazilian cherry. And oh, well, my God. It looks like oak. Uh, I've taped off every single handle, the floor, everything, because I'm painting the crap out of that I, thing. I had to stop her from just getting a paint sprayer, standing in the middle That's and turning in a true. circle. <laughs> this is the GR Dad strategy. I'm like, we need to paint everything. He's like, let's just blow some paint up in the middle and it'll be fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, do the Mythbusters and just explode it. Oh, my God. So, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's going to be great. It's got a queen-size bed and then the, um, the kind of dining area, the table folds down. And then there's kind of cushions that go across to also make, I think, a full-size bed um, on mm -hmm. the side. And yep. so there's two giant beds. There's room on the floor. And then there's a space between, like, the driver and passenger seat that's perfectly dog-sized. It's going to be good. But even the one that's the full-size bed is fairly close to the driver's seat and has a big window next to it. So yeah. it'll be, like, three, two or three dogs lying up there looking out the window. And the dogs loved it. Like, yeah. they were all, like, you know, we were poking around in it, like figuring everything out and they're all in there jumping up on the beds looking yeah. around chewing their ball they're very comfortable with it so it's going to be really nice for the these big long drives i mean one that we get to drive together instead of separate cars yeah that already is good uh and it has a bathroom 
So because when we drive, we'd like call each other and talk to each other on the phone. I know, which is was kind of nice, but it'll be nicer just being in the same space. It will. But if it's like Jared, Adam, tired of you, I won't talk to you more. I'm just gonna go like go lay in the bed in the I'm, back. I'm gonna part. go and lock myself in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> Jared, Dad, I'm driving. Get out of here. Go. <laughs> Go going, make me a sandwich. I'm going all the way to the back. <laughs> uh, but I am going to paint the whole thing. There is a curtain, I think. I could like close the curtain around the bed. <laughs> this, this is the thing. So, like, I'm in there and I'm like, oh, fuck, it's so ugly. Like, oh, this is all so ugly. And dear dad's like, look, there's a curtain. Look how and neat I was this like, is. <laughs> I'm like, you're excited about this curtain. He's like, it's for privacy. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's terrible. And he's all like, oh, it's so exciting. Look at all these levers. And he's like, just pushing was, all the like, Look at all this neat stuff. Hey, the door stays open magnetically. <laughs> okay, so it boomer. doesn't bang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, dear dad, I think is legit excited about it. And I am like, this is a practical addition to my life. You reluctantly admitted that like kids like the idea of having RVs because there's like all these things, buttons to push and stuff. I, I mean, I don't think we've had that conversation. No. I guess people <laughs> like pushing buttons. I'm a computer scientist. I like pushing buttons more than anybody else. And I hate that RV. Oh, it's got a generator. Oh my God. All right. We're not going to talk about all the specs <laughs> of the RV. It's the tiniest possible RV where you can like walk from the driver's part into anyway, the back part. It was a freaking nightmare to to purchase it it took way too long oh, yeah. we almost ended up with a trailer we couldn't use it was a nightmare yeah we're we won't go through the whole thing but a bunch of people are like when is brody coming and i'm like things got complicated which was gr dad spending five hours at the place we tried to buy i mean we did end up buying the rv but it was a nightmare I'm it was touch and go they, yeah they gave me the key too soon almost drove away in it anyway now we have it but, uh, and, but just Chief Brody was a, a dream of a running mate. Oh, I mean, yeah. he, he just settles in. Occasionally, he'll come up and lick my hand or, you know, look up and look around. But he was just great. He, he, he drank, which, you know, like Hops gets too stressed to drink on these trips. He yeah. ate his dinner. He's great going up and down the stairs. I mean, he was just, he was a dream. Great co-pilot. Yeah. So I think it's going to be good. Like once I get it, painted on the inside and it looks more like something you would see on pinterest as opposed to something you'd see in an aarp ad i will feel a little better about it uh get my take those damn curtains down and i mean i can put up a different curtain but that those like weird fireproof motel blanket fabric they're curtains. gold i think they're gold colored oh, almost they're gold so they're ugly. dark gold which is bad <laughs> It's so ugly. No. Uh, anyway, I'm taking a series of before and after pictures. So it has a big point. giant TV in it. Yeah, there is a big giant TV. And Jared Dad, so when we were in it yesterday, Jared Dad's like, look at the big TV. And I was like, cool. Uh, turn it on and see what we can see. And then it wouldn't turn on. It turns out you have to have the RV plugged in for that. Jared Dad was so angry. He was spending, I'm like, after 45 minutes, I'm like, we're not going to try to turn this TV on anymore. Like, let's go read the manual and come back later. And he's like, I need to turn on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I mean, Jared dad is the guy who reads the manual. Yeah. And it wasn't in the manual. I got to say though. So I, I always give Jared dad a hard time because he literally a hundred percent takes the owner's manual out of the car and reads it cover to cover. You and never I, know. There's some good stuff in there. I mock him for it. Uh, but when I was up in Maryland last week, I had rented a Jeep for the week and one of the tires was low at the airport and i was like that's weird like usually they don't send you out with a low tire the tire like screen was on so clearly had come in low and they'd filled it up and then didn't check so it had a slow leak and i filled it up i put in some fix a flat and i came out the morning of the second day and it was flat so I had to change the tire. So I jacked. Which is lucky Jeeps have that big yeah, spare yeah. tire in them. And I like I know how to change the tire, but I jacked the thing. You know, I put the jack under, kind of like in front of the the rear wheel was the one that was flat. So I put it in front of that. You know, on the frame, jacked the thing all the way up, and the wheel was still on the ground. And I know Gr Dad has changed these tires before, so I call him and I'm like, "Tell me what I'm doing wrong here." All right, so let me add step one. It's awesome that I can call Gr Dad and be like tell me what I'm doing wrong. And he doesn't go, hey, woman, let me explain to you a thing that all men have knowledge of. Oh, my God. there are lots of people that I would call and they'd be like, let's enjoy this moment, Jen, where you don't know what you're doing. Dear dad is not like that no, at all. I felt bad that it was frustrating and that you were going through this. Yep, and I was in a 
beautiful white dress with green birds on it changing tire and he's like yeah i read the manual and i know it seems counterintuitive but you have to jack it up on the axle and i was like okay thanks for reading the (laughs) manual for me that worked perfect uh so for all my mocking you have some good knowledge from that at one time (laughs) glad for you to have all the rv knowledge so if i'm just gonna if i need something i'll be like and go (laughs) <laughs> Tell me what it well, says. you got to turn the gray water tank on. The, <laughs> the, you got to change this switch. I mean, there's such, such a freaking... It's so inside. Oh, the whole thing is so inside-y. insidery. So anyway, we have one now. And, <laughs> uh, once I'm done, maybe I will be happy. The guy who it. sold it to me actually said, we have a lot of people who come in and buy these for their dogs. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because I was like, you know, we got five dogs. We got to move them around. And he's like, that, that happens a lot. Huh. So, you know, interesting. All right. Good. Uh, okay. So I'm looking at my list of stuff. Um, I'm not ready to talk about Jasmine yet. So we're just going to put that off for maybe next week. I, cool. I just, I'm still broken and I need time. All right. So we talked about Guac. We talked about Brody. Um, one quick note on Swizzle. Her nose was bleeding this week. This is the second time this has happened. I waited it out for 24 hours and it went away. So that is the new Swizzle nose breed strategy. Weird. Unknown cause seems to be fine. It's good we spent the fifteen hundred dollars getting it scoped, so I know that there's not really much to she worry about. She just licks herself, nose, it drips. Yeah. No, oh, weird. Sweet. All right. So there you go. That is the dog updates. Mm. Um. Do you want to do Key's life, conk life story, or German word first? I think the German word. Oh, sure. okay. Hit me. I think someone suggested this, but we can talk about it too. Hamsterkäufer. Oh, Hamsterkäufer is yeah. very timely. Yes. Yeah. It was, I think it wound up in the story of the coronavirus or, so, you know, where it's like... It, People it's, are buying a ton of toilet paper. Hamster is, is a hamster, duh. Yeah. And Hamsterkäufer is, is someone frantically stockpiling things or something where it's, you know, the idea is I mean, if you've ever seen these hamster... They just stuff everything in their cheeks, right? Yep. They're not eating it. They're just like, I'm keeping this for later. And their cheeks get giant yeah, big. Yeah. And you're just like, there's an element of frantic, non-logical. Like hoarding, hoarding panic s- buying. Yeah. Panic buying, yeah. But it's this, this stocking up on things, like stuffing it all in your cheeks and not even eating it or enjoying it. So th- this is, you know, now people are panic buying toilet paper or whatever it is. And you just, it just, it just evokes this manic picture of you're stuffing it all in your cheeks and you need it for later and your eyes are all crazy like <laughs> hamsterkäufer yeah that's good well we have hamsterkäufed um two months supply of all of the various dog foods that we need just in case shit gets crazy uh we also have quite a supply of rice and legumes and pasta and yeah if we get sick we don't want to get anyone else sick so we'll just hang out the good thing about the keys is that we are naturally socially distanced from everyone uh, so yeah. as long as we can like go to the grocery store, we're totally cool. And uh, if we can't go to the grocery store, we got about two months of supplies. So we're probably fine. Got three months of liquor. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We have a lot of liquor. We have a lot of champagne. I hadn't even thought about that, but the self self quarantining, you know, can be kind of good. I mean, self quarantining is like, like all right, look, Jen, you can't go out and talk to anybody. <gasps> and I go. Like huh. the, what? How am I being rewarded? Like why did? What did I do to earn this? And this can I do it again? I've always wanted. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, fortunately, there's not um, really any coronavirus down here in the Keys yet. There's got to be though. There's so much traveling in and out, and cruise ships dock here all the time, yeah. which is a lot of people. Yep. Uh, but maybe they're just passing it to each other and getting back <laughs> on their cruise ship. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so the story of the keys taste of the keys story of the week is that while we don't have coronavirus down here yet we do have dengue fever well the florida department of health has received their laboratory confirmation of a case of dengue fever down here i'm not sure we're better off now all of a sudden (laughs) give me some of that flu uh we have so many mosquitoes down here and so dengue fever comes from mosquitoes and uh yeah, so it also gives you a flu-like illness, muscle aches, pains, fever, sometimes a rash, but you don't have any coughing. 
So that's how you can tell when you're like, oh, I feel like crap. I have a fever. I have aches. Do I have coronavirus or do I have dengue? Depends if you're coughing. If you're not coughing, dengue. If you are coughing, coronavirus. Um, Is dengue fever also a coronavirus? It is not. No, it is a flava virus, I believe. Mm. They just did an episode of This Podcast Will Kill You. They did a coronavirus one, and the one before that was on dengue fever. Really? I believe, yeah. I thought it was a little longer ago. I remember there was dengue fever. Yeah, dandy dengue. They just did it. Oh. Uh, don't don't quote me on it being a flava virus. I am not a... Does it make your eyes go yellow? That's yellow fever. Yeah, but it's in the same class of of viruses as yellow fever. So it messes with your kidneys. Yeah. Um, I think one of the hepatitises is also in that class. Hepatitis was with your liver. C, I think. I don't remember. Yeah. The hepatitis A, B, and C are like all different kinds of viruses. Like they totally just different. all happen to affect the liver. Yeah. Um, Anyway, dengue is not contagious, except like from mosquitoes. You can't pass it from one person to another. So stupid mosquitoes kill those fuckers. Okay. Dengue so, fever. Um, and we missed the conch blowing competition. That's like a little note here. Oh, That's yeah. what they do. They blow into conchs. So we're going to be wearing off and also washing our hands. How does, how does that work? Mosquitoes can sting us on our hands if we keep washing the off off. Yeah, well. So we're going to have to apply the off, then frequently wash our hands, and then reapply the off to our hands so we don't get dengue on our hands from mosquito bites. That's going to be a complicated place for us for a while. Yeah, we're definitely getting dengue fever. <laughs> I mean, look, the good thing is, is if it's just you and me staying here with the dogs, we're not going to get coronavirus. Cause That's true. We'll just get dengue fever. Yeah. Um, well, yay. We, we better homstakoif us some off. Yeah. A bunch of off. We got some we got some good amount of off. Yeah, so this weekend we're running we're going to the freaking Everglades. <laughs> oh. So if you want to hear about our weekend adventure, uh subscribe to Runs with Dogs, the running podcast, because this weekend Jared and I are both running an ultra marathon in the middle of the Everglades. This isn't like near the Everglades. It's not somebody's paved trail in the Everglades. It's a bush whacked path through the Everglades made just for this race, where they warn you about Cougars. Crocodiles and Florida Panthers slash Cougars. Um, but it turns out the most dangerous beast is the mosquito. Oh, so. And the anyway, bugs on the mosquito. Yeah, we're doing that on Saturday, so we're going to have to bring all of that homstakoi. And you know who sweats this. all his off off is me. Yeah. There is waterproof off now. Really? Yeah, like they have like the sunscreen that you won't sweat off. They have that for off too. That'd be a good test because usually it's like me having sunscreen or off on it'd be like me swimming and someone spraying it on the pool <laughs> that's about as, as effective as it is for me well next time we venture to the grocery store oh, to waterproof off stock off we'll get some waterproof off it's a, it's a roll on <laughs> oh my god all right well thanks everyone as always for tuning in and sharing our adventures and uh until next week don't bite anyone unless they ask social you social distancing biting is the opposite of that don't bite bye Bye.